Okay. Well, Epic. We did it. We're here. All right. I'm gonna be pretty I... quiet for this recording, just to let you all know. Also, you might hear my parents. Not much I can do about that. Uh, True. But it's cool. I didn't even know we're. I didn't even know we're starting. <laughs> oh, you might also hear a, a guest. Uh, you might also hear a guest appearance from uh, from yours truly, um, Daffodil. I realize there should be oh. some context. Like, who the hell is Daffodil, and why should I care? Um, I'm probably not keeping this. Uh... We well, no, it's all good. We <laughs> this is kind of important. This is kind of one of the reasons why I want to rec- uh, start recording and synchronize so quickly, so I could make. Oh, okay. We have we, so okay. we we have sheep. Well, we we own sheep on this property. And, really? I have no yeah, idea. We have, we have three sheep. We have a male and two females, and um. Um, we we got them like last summer, so we've been learning about being shepherds and stuff like that. Kind of, it's been pretty chill and cool. Anyways, uh, the the mo- one of the moms, uh, we there's a there's a brown furred, uh, female sheep and a white furred female sheep. And the white furred female sheep gave birth to a baby like, uh, almost like I want to say, five days ago. And it was cool. It was chill. Like well, I was just walking down the hill one day, and I saw like this little black lamb just in the middle of the middle of the <laughs> orchard. And I was like, that 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 wasn't there yesterday. <laughs> who who's this man? I don't and you know how like little baby. You know how like uh like some sometimes like you'll see images of like animals online, and they have like that I don't I don't give a fuck type face. You know, like they don't really care. Yeah. Like all these lambs have that, they have like a really bad case of it. Not a bad case, probably kind of a, an awesome case of it. Like they look awesome. <laughs> he just, I mean, Brad just spawned in. Yeah, he just spawned in. He's like, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> I heard that, but uh, <laughs> cool. that sounds interesting. No, it's all good. Um, uh, busy, busy welcome time. back. Oh yeah, yeah. Anyways, baby to sheep, baby real sheep, talk. Yeah, baby sheep were born. Uh been taking care of those um and so there's the brown sheep mom she gave birth like about three uh-huh. days ago well usually their first their first litter isn't twins but this ba- this mom did give birth to twins and i guess when the oh. mama sheep knows if it doesn't have enough milk for its young yings y- little babies uh it'll only let the strongest one feed and i'll reject the oh. i'll reject the weaker one and so uh yeah, that was pretty raw. Like, so Daffodil, the sheep that is pro- in the house and might start bleeding for food at any minute now, um, it uh, oh, actually no, it just got fed. Um, it was like born like like 15 minutes in. It was like, I mean, man, I'm hungry. I want some food. And the mom's like, no, and would just like frequently headbutt it away. And it, oh my god, I know it's crazy. It looks rough, but I was looking it up. I, bet, I guess like baby sheep are pretty resilient. Not like super resilient, but like you know, they're they're born and they're able to walk immediately, pretty much. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyways, huh. long story short, uh, I had to bottle feed and bathe and shower a a baby sheep, a newborn baby sheep. Uh, Strange. And we're, we're raising these sheep to eat, but because this one baby sheep in particular just got rejected from the mom, and like it's our first time doing this, and we're bottle feeding it. And so we're will it. the it's a hold pet. On, will the, it's just a straight up pet now. <laughs> no, will the uh, mom ever accept the sheep when it gets older, or what? No, no, because the mom does it by smell. In fact, the first time I, from what I understand, I'm no animal expert. So if anyone listens to this and actually does know anything about <laughs> sheep farming, uh, you're probably right and I'm wrong. But from my understanding, uh, that the mom, the the first like day is like the most important day because it's. The baby drinks the milk from the mom, and it gets all the colostrum, which is a type of fat that the baby needs to live, literally the first day. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't get enough of that, it, it will just straight up die. Um, hmm. So that happens. And then the mom bonds with the baby sheep to know, okay, you're my baby. Your scent is – my scent's all over you, so I know you're my baby. So only you get to feed from me. Oh. So all that happens on the first day. If you get too much of your human scent on them on the first day, the mom is like, you don't smell anything like me. You smell weird. Get away from me. Headbutt. Bam. And then, you know. Oh. Yeah. So uh, that, that's, that's, yeah, that's what happened. 
So, no, the mom's not ever going to try to accept the baby. So, the, the, the baby now has imprinted on us. The baby pretty much, like, like after, like, the first 15 minutes of it being born, like, <laughs> we literally, the brown sheep, like, gave birth. And, like, we came out, like, a few, like, minutes or whatever later. And, like, the baby first saw both me and my dad and started running towards us. And we're like, ah, shit. It's imprinted on us. No, it thinks we're its mom. We tried getting it to the brown to the brown mom. Uh, it huh. started figuring out, oh, this is my mom, maybe, and tried like suckling from it. And the mom was like, no, nah, I don't want you, and just headbat it in like the side like several times. But, wow. Yeah, nature's beautiful. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. welcome back to Real Talk, episode thirteen. <laughs> Oh, yeah, um, this is the 13th episode. We forgot to record last week. I'll just be honest with you. Well, we I know. had a scenario we, happen to me. A lot me. of stuff happened. It was, it was been, oh. It's been two weeks, realistically, since we were supposed to last record. Very safe True, because I usually record a week in advance, and yeah. we're off that schedule, and we'll never be on it unless we take another break. We never so. be on the same. Wait, no. That was two weeks. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're not consistent. Uh, is, is basically it. But I will say, I just bonked my desk. Um, I have beef with Ikea, and I, and I have some major beef with Ikea. I so. have, I, I think there's, if we're going to get some, I think, I think I, I don't have beef with Ikea, but I, 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 I was at a wedding literally yesterday. I'm so tired. Uh-huh. Every bone in my body aches. And that's because mm-hmm. I was doing a lot of dancing. <laughs> go boy, boy, go. Yeah, uh, I, so I mean uh, that's happened. Uh, that's something I can talk about too. I have things happening in my life. Uh, 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 later on in this episode, I think uh, we should uh, make our own Lucha Libre personas. <laughs> so I, I I'm taking a I'm taking a, a, a Chicano's ethnic studies course mm-hmm. in college. And uh, the professor's pretty chill. Like, one of the few writing assignments he has us do is um, just pretty much every every other week we have to, like, write just about, like, a page about, like, something relating to mm-hmm. Chicano or Mexican culture. Uh, and I was well, like, well, me. shit, you know what? I'll talk about, I'll talk about the movie. <laughs> I'll talk about Nacho Libre and how, like, and how it's a guilty pleasure and how probably not the best representation of Chicano. Chicano slash Mexican culture, but still cool nonetheless because I like Jack Black. <laughs> but um, that's funny. But then I just started researching nothing but. But then I just started going deep into Lucha Libre research. And dude, Lucha Libres are so cool. <laughs> and so I don't remember anything about that kind of shit. It's been a minute since I've. Well, that's even better. That. We get it just. I I I don't know. Hey, we don't I will say I did, I did beat bison, uh, burrito bison, um, on my phone, um, that one yeah. flash ring mobile game. There you go. You ever played uh, Guacamelee? No, I don't know what that is. It's a Metroidvania, but it's like luchador themed. It's a luchador themed. I know what it is. I recognize it now that you're describing it, but no, I've not played it. I actually heard it was pretty good. I hear that's supposed to be really good, and also again, Lucha Libres. I. I, I'm not a professional wrestling head, but I feel like I could be. Dude. From the what little lo- I know about dude. it. Dude. <laughs> Hold on, wait. So at, so at work, yeah. um, I'll explain the my beef with Ikea later, but at work, mm-hmm. um, uh, I don't know who has control of the TV. Um, they just put it on. Mm-hmm. I don't really care because I don't watch TV. Right. But every once in a while, WWE starts flying. <laughs> and you know what? I get it. <laughs> you know what? I get That's it. awesome. No, that's awesome. I get the, I get I get the appeal. I think it's really funny. I like how goofy it is. And I saw Logan Paul, and I was so shocked. Logan Paul was in WWE. It was either Logan or Jake Paul. I don't know. They're the same person. But one of the Paul brothers, the one, um, he was fucking kicking ass on WWE, and he fucking he won his battle. I'm like, well, I didn't know he was no in that shit. No way. You know what? I don't really like Logan Paul, but I bet you he would, as a wrestler, make a great heel. You know, it was kind of Kino. It was pretty cool. I was like, what the? I, I, was, I was like, who? I don't know. You, uh, I, I put it on fun. the. Uh, yeah, 
was I was just shocked. I was like, oh my god. But yeah, I, I get I I get WWE. It's it's funny. Yeah. Well, with Lucha Libre, it's like it's like I mean, it's just. I mean, oh, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna the say, Mexican version. It, it's, it's kind of well, they're kind of separate because professional wrestling isn't mm-hmm. it exactly like an American thing. It's just been a thing yeah. for a while. Uh, Lucha Libre fi- fighting started around the Mexican Revolution. Like it was done as a like a, it was started as scripted fighting and just professional wrestling matches around the time of the Mexican Revolution to oh, wow. just create entertainment for people to get their minds off of the war. It started oh, gaining a cool. lot of traction, and I can't remember why they started using masks. A lot of people think it has it had to do with ties to like the Aztec and like Mayan culture, which are indigenous okay. mask cultures. That's not the case. It's not because of that. It just happens to really well coincide with Mexican culture, so they pl- really play into that aspect. It's not. It's just kind of that. cool as fuck. I can't remember yeah. why it had to do with like some sort of thing with the, like America consumerism or stuff, something like that. Anyway, society. Yeah, society. Anyway, they started incorporating masked fighters, and it blew up. People really liked it, and it started getting popularity because of the masked fighter. You don't know who he is. You just know the persona he is on the ring. And then it went the extra yeah. mile when El Sancto happened, who was like the world's most, like, oh, like the most famous uh, and prolific uh, Mexican lucha libre in uh, in the history of lucha libre fighting. Like, they uh-huh. they had mo- they made movies with the guy. And uh, he's the guy, you know, like how uh, the thing, like, oh, you don't remove a luchador's mask? Like, yeah. it's bad luck. That started with El Sancto. He was so dedicated to the mask and his persona. He would, like, in the ring, outside the ring, he goes to the store to buy groceries to take home. He's wearing the mask. Anytime he's in public, he wears <laughs> that mask. The only time I think he took it off was, like, towards the very end of his life when, like, you know, he was, like, was retiring and stuff. And it was, like, I think two weeks before, like, he actually died. It was crazy. Anyways, uh-huh. Lucha Libre fighting. Masks are cool. Also, they do so many cool more, like, aerials and stuff. They do, like, backflips and, like, pile drivers into people. They'll do, like, jump. Uh-huh. They'll do, like, drop kicks off of, like. <laughs> Dude, how, uh, <laughs> what I'm wondering is, like. The, the ropes. It's so cool. Like, like, like how do, I wonder how they do that. Like, that, that looks hard to, yeah. like, do it and not hurt someone. Right, exactly. And, I mean, I think it's hard enough to do it, right? And then it's hard yeah. enough to do it and then make it look like you've made contact i mean yeah yeah and this kind of leads into natural libre like yeah luchador wrestling yeah it, i absolutely athleticism is real good for them for for really going into that physicality and going and giving a good show i like the movie natural libre because you know jack black's character he he wants to be a luchador a luchador <laughs> libre fighter the movie doesn't like then like unveil the curtain before his eyes and show that oh lucha libre fighting is fake and scripted no the, the movie treats lucha libre fighting as like an actual real fight so like all the fights he's doing are oh. like real he's really getting beaten up in these these matches so it, it suspends your disbelief so that you yourself can be like oh shit he's really got to fight these <laughs> these devil's cavemen and shit and it, i don't know it's good it's good i i like it i like it i'm not a, uh. i i can't say i'm a true wrestling head fan or a lucha libre fan because I haven't watched a whole lot of it, but from what little well, I've same. done, man, I really, I really fuck with it. It's really Cause, fun. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it right now, cause like, like I don't, re- well, I don't really give a shit about fighting in general, but yeah. like, the thing I kind of think is cool about like the WWE kind of shit, yeah, is the fat one. I like that they really lean, cause I think everyone now knows it's fake, yeah, but they really, they really lean into it, and they have like stories. Yeah. Um. Even 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 outside the fight, there's like 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 they're not interviews, but it's just like the people talking to each other, and you, and it's like like they're acting. It's just really funny. Absolutely. And it's really goofy, and, and um, also it's like when you watch UFC, you just feel bad because someone's like they're like actually hurting themselves, like they're gonna get yeah. brain damage, and then and then at least I can watch like someone do like mega ultra suplex deluxe, and then fucking them. Actual person not getting their ass kicked, but the person it's like in the fight, it's quote like, unquote, it's like, is getting their ass kicked. Yeah. It's cool. It's like real it's life cool. anime. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know that's dumb, but like to a degree, like you will see like a you'll see like a forty five something year old man 
ripped as shit with a mask on with like purple highlights shadow like, clone jutsu yeah exactly <laughs> he'll say like shit like that and it'll jump off yeah. of the ring and do a pile driver on like a 25 year old and it's like oh like, dude this is badass you like know? i was watching the logan paul i was watching the logan paul one yeah. or whatever did you, i don't really know he was talking to the crowd and then the guy just like wobbles up to him because because in the fight um logan paul had a leg injury okay so the guy was just kicking his leg uh, as a part of the thing. <laughs> yeah. He got up. He started talking to the crowd. The guy sneaks up on him, and then, like, Logan does this, like, reversal, and then they get back on the ring. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. No, it's, it's cool. It's cool. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm, so, I, I'm so into it, man. It's so good. I, I really want to no, see it. No, I get it. I get it. There's, a, there's this one that I think I want to start watching. Um, I guess it was called uh, – uh, Lucha Libre Underground or something like that, or Lucha Underground, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a it was a Lucha Libre scripted fighting show directed by uh, Rob uh, Robert uh, Robert Rodriguez, the uh-huh. the same guy that did Sp- uh, Spy Kids, that guy. Oh, Spy Kids, <laughs> ma- also Machete, you know, with uh, what what's his face, uh, Danny Trejo, Danny Trejo. Like he, that 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 guy, and so they they did a they did a um, a lucha libre uh, fighting show, and uh, it's supposed to be really the first three seasons I think are supposed to be pretty good. I think it only has uh-huh. three seasons. The first one's supposed to be really good and stuff, but yeah, that's cool. No, it's um, awesome. Anyways, I've been getting anyways, into really, yeah, I've been getting into that. Speaking so. speaking of fighting, what I'm about to do the IKEA. Um, I ordered a desk. Yeah, a pretty nice desk. I don't. I cannot be bothered to pronounce it. It's the gaming desk. I, I didn't choose it because it's, it was a gaming desk. Me and my mom yeah. looked at it and we said, "Wow, it looked nice," and we picked it. Um, and one of the brackets, like the metal parts that supports the two legs together, yeah. broke while assembling. <laughs> hmm. Was it made of um, wood or metal? Metal. What? Um, so whenever you, you know how you screw onto something, you screw it into a screw hole. Yeah. The screw That's hole fell out. That's usually the point of screwing things in, but yeah. Yeah, the screw hole fell out, which I didn't even know was possible. The so wait, what? Oh, so like, like it was. Huh? Like I screw in something into that middle bar. The thing that receives the screw fell out, which I didn't even know was possible. Yeah, oh, so weird. now I can't. So so I had to get. Uh, the, thankfully, they're allegedly gonna send me a replacement. It's been almost a week. <laughs> I haven't heard any so news back. I should like call them a, again. Do you just have like a partially created desk then? Uh, no, I took my old desk back and I'm using that right now. But um, the reason why I didn't want to record yesterday is I sent an image to Jimmy. I don't know if did he show you it. I don't know if he did. Maybe, maybe not. I, I, I'm I, gonna I was put at a it. wedding. I was at a wedding all day yesterday. Okay, so with the power of of editing, I will show you the setup that I was going to use if we were going to record, which I kind of decided it wasn't a good idea. And, and it, I said, "Wow, we should do this it's later." Pop up but in three, two, two, one, one, and I, that's exactly that's, what I sent it, it to. That's the image. It's it's so bad. Oh, Look at it. Oh. <laughs> so um, for the past like <laughs> week. I've been using my drawer that I stored like a bunch of crap in. Yeah. Um, as where my monitor and keyboard are, and my mouse is like on the edge of it, and I've been like putting my keyboard because I played Apex on this thing um, with some friends. Oh, you so I had my mad keyboard, lad. I had keyboard in my lap, and then my arm was on the dress. Uh, the what are they called? I don't know the English word for it. <laughs> Dresser. Dresser. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm Mexican. Um, but um. Well, what do, what so the dresser. Call? I don't know. We there's like multiple different things that my family calls items, including the deal. So I okay. just like mix between like thirty different names, and I can't decide one. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> that's another story. I think I already told that story actually. Um, but um, the fucking the dresser. That's what they're called. I I was thinking of like cabinet drawer thingy. The deal object thing you put close I, I couldn't think of a name <laughs> I was showing blanks <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, yeah so I've been using that as my PC setup uh, for like the, like a week 
Uh, I just got my desk back. It's been so miserable. I want my, I want my, because this thing is a new desk. The reason right. why I bought it, mm -hmm. it's because it's bigger. Like, it's so much bigger. Yeah, you have I can actually, actually put, put my, things on. I can have two monitors, right. which I want. I can have speakers, which I might get. I don't know if I will. I can put my PC on my desk. Right. Because where my PC is on that image is actually where my PC has been for the better part of like a year or two. I think yeah. I've had my PC for a year only, actually. But it's been like there for a year. And it, oh, it's been two years, I think, now. But, like, it's just been there. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I want my PC near my thing. And I maybe want to add more lights to my computer so my computer doesn't look so boring. Um, right. I also need to clean it. But, yeah, I just haven't had a desk. So all the parts are just next to me and, like, near my bed. Um, so I'm just, like, here, just sad because I, I can't. Because I have a bunch of figures displayed. I'm going to buy an Ikea shelf, um, built that. And, and. Cause I, I'm pretty good at building furniture. Like I, I've built, I've built my, fr I have the desk I'm using now. I built it. Um, I built like, like four chairs before. Built a whole computer. When I was a kid, I helped my, um, uh, my cousin's dad. Can't remember the name for that. Mm -hmm. um, uncle. Um, I helped. He's not my uncle. No. Cousin. Uh, uh, but um. I, I, uh, I don't know. I just, I, Fair enough. Something. You're all good. Something. I don't know the word. I don't know words at all. Tio? Um, no, I wouldn't call him that because he's not like – because the thing about like family is that uh, – ah, it's so hard to describe. I, I, I don't know English words for like describing family members. Um, but um, he, um, he – I, me and him, we built my cousin a desk uh, – not a desk, a bed when I was a kid. So, like, I have a history of, like, assembling things. Yeah. I'm not, like, the most biggest assembler. Like, I don't do it for fun. I just, I've just done it before, so I have, like, the know-how to do it, which makes me mad because, like, I can't build. I was going to build this desk in, like, one day because right. <laughs> I can do that. But, uh, but no, fucking, I can't. It fucking broke on me. <laughs> I'm so mad because I built my computer in a day as well. So, like, I'm, I'm again, I'm used, to, I'm used to, like, assembling stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, like, man, I don't know. I just got, I got um, unlucky. Um, but I have for some reason, been gaming a lot, uh, even though I've I had such a weird setup for a while. I don't know about you. Have you been gaming at all? Not recently. I mean, no, not, not a whole lot of gaming. I've been more doing reading school and getting prepped for, for again, more my cousin's wedding. I haven't been doing a whole uh. lot of gaming like I wanted to. Yeah, so this year, for January, and it's almost the end of February, I've been, like, grinding the hell out of games just just why not um but uh i got in like um I, I just, i'll just i'll just talk about the games i've been playing recently because i thought I'd, i thought it'd be fun to like give updates on just gaming um i beat futaba's palace um in persona 5 nice. have not made any more progress after that because i do not want to experience the worst arc in the entire game i'm going to cry because the writing is so bad in that part um but in better news um, after um, the last episode where I said I was going to play Persona 3 Reload after that session, um, I am halfway through Reload, um, and by God, this game is amazing. Uh, yesterday, I got to um, October 4th. If anyone knows anything about Persona 3, you, are, you, you already know. Um, almost cried, um, which is surprising because I n games usually never get me to almost cry. It's only happened like once. Um and it's also really funny because in Fez, uh, on that day, I was actually laughing at the scene because it was really goofy. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I've been I've been playing so much, so just just way too much Persona Three. Um, so I also restarted. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. Go I was ahead. gonna say I'm assuming Persona Three Reloaded is like a remaster of the game. It's it's a remake. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. They made a remaster of Persona 3 Portable. It's terrible remaster, but it is a remaster. But this is a full-blown remake, well, what's like, the, from the ground up. What's that Persona game that, like, it's on Steam. There's, like, a Steam port for it, but it it's it's broken. You can't even play it if you wanted to. Like, Rocco saw me about it. Oh, I think he's talking about when I try to play Persona 4. Uh, is, does Persona 4 not work on Steam? No, it works very well. I just had a really, really terrible laptop, oh. and it's become like a bit of an inside joke <laughs> I see. for a while. 
Um, uh, it was one of my first few videos I worked on was me. I just like, uh, if I bring that laptop out now um, and I play Persona 4, all the models, uh, all the UI will be um, like um, just like stretched, warped, like flashing. And then the models will like disappear and like stretch like ragdolls. <laughs> it's like really, Whoa. really cursed. It's, it's, I should need to record it again if my um, laptop isn't like dead from using it for like way too long. So it's a laptop um, issue. It's not even anything to do with the game. No, yeah, because the game runs great. Like I, I tried, I tested it recently. Well, not recently, but when I got my computer, I'm like, does it run for Persona Four? It, yeah, it runs fine. It's um, it was a, the my computer didn't have um, it doesn't support Persona Four doesn't support Intel graphics. Um, fun fact. Oh. Which means that um, if you have a laptop that doesn't have a GPU inside of it, um, it's just not gonna work. I um, see. Yeah, it's just not gonna fucking work. Um, cause I had a Core i three and intel graphics so yeah. just shit just did not work at all it was so terrible um which is a shame because i wanted to play that game but um yeah. persona 3 is peak very 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 good dm i recommend anyone play it um i beat cruelty squad in like you did? two weeks in like in like a week or two oh, yeah okay. I, I beat the game um which is funny because everything i knew about cruelty squad it was like the first few levels because like most videos only show like the first few levels yeah but like i went through the whole game does it and it was better? oh it, it's it's so good it's such a good game it's still getting updates um, and stuff right like it's still getting supported kind of okay. i mean the updates are very minor like um for like when a game came out the armor never worked so like this year they fixed it mm -hmm. the guy fixed it and then he added steam achievements just because he thought it'd be funny right um not that they really matter. You just get an achievement for beating each stage and then beating it with the um, tuxedo implant, which means that you instantly die if you get your shot, oh. which is funny. Um, but yeah, Cruelty Squad controls very weirdly. Very, very good immersive sim. Probably the best immersive sim I've ever played. And I don't play immersive sims, so it is the only immersive sim I've played. <laughs> but it is a very, very good game. Most Selena doesn't count, find me. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was about to say, um, uh, Most Selena? It's... I don't. I, I personally speaking, I don't classify it as an emergency. They added worms. Game. They added worms to Mosolina. I I saw that. I kind of want to play it again. They also, um, clamps yeah. you can move now. The oh, same way nice. that you can move tentacles, you can move the the clamps the same way. Oh, nice. Yeah, we should play that on one day. Oh, that'd be um, cool. But uh, yeah, maybe for maybe maybe a video on Real Talk or the hallway. Do not maybe not the hallway or Real Talk. I th I, we could try doing our own little Mosolina thing. Yeah, that would be fun. But yeah, I've been playing Cruelty Squad. That game was fun. Um, I didn't get too back into it, um, but I did play Monastery uh, when you were playing. Yeah. Very, very fun game. I, I need to get back into I it. I finally got to Titanium, man. Dude, Titanium Dude. conveyor belts are so good. Oh. They're so... Oh. Yeah, so I, I converted um I converted Anma uh, <laughs> and Man. I don't know how I fucked that up. Oh. And Man into uh into Mindustry. Very, very good game. It's so hard to describe to people other than you just gotta play and learn everything. It's a um, resource but I, manage it's a resource a, a management eh, tower of, defense game. Yeah, resource management tower defense game. People say it's like Factorio. It's nothing like Factorio. No, Factorio is no. a whole different thing. That's that's yeah. Like they look similar, the whole different beast. Like Factorio that's a that's is a that's like light years that's more a complex. That's, I feel like that is a resource man. Well, true, I guess that is a resource management game where you build factories and stuff. Mind you, sure, you're just trying to survive. <laughs> yeah. You're just trying not to die, um, especially in the later stages. They get brutal. Um, that, that game was so it's so fun. Um, I played Power World for a little bit, but um, I stopped playing after eleven hours. I should probably pick it up again, but um, yeah, I don't. I haven't been playing much Power World. I beat um this game called um Slay the Princess. Um, Raver was talking about that as well. Very very good game. It's such a good game. Um, I'm waiting this year. They're gonna give the game a major update and they're gonna add, expand uh, some of the routes because okay. the game's already done. But they just want to expand some of the routes you can do. Yeah. Because that game is all about like um you you do multiple runs, mm -hmm. um in one run. Yeah. Uh, so one run will consist of two acts. Each act is like you restart time kind mm -hmm. of deal. So you go through every dialogue choice you make, will determine what the second act will be like. So, 
Um, let's say you walk up to the princess and you actually do what the title says and you try to kill her. Yeah. Um, uh, in the second act, when um, you eventually die, because every every time you do it, you die. In the first time around, for the most part. Yeah. So you'll get um, you'll come back. Um, you'll remember the narrator won't remember, and then there will be a voice inside your head, and then the princess will remember what you do. So then it picks up from there, and if, if things get more complicated, you'll go through a third act or a fourth oh. act, um, and you just do that until you uh, reach the conclusion of um, whatever combination you did of your uh, of the voices you get in your head, yeah. or the um, princess you get um, to deal with, and it's a very 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 unique game, very fully cool. voice acted too, which is crazy. Um, kind of like choose your own. Age? It's yeah. like it's like it's like Stanley Parable is how I okay. describe it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's very very cool, um, very funny too. Um, but also has a beautiful beautiful art style. Um, I know these developers. Um, I think they made this game called Scarlet Hollow, which isn't finished yet, but I've heard very good things about it. So I do own the game. Uh, I might play it one day, just maybe either when it's done or whenever I don't have such a huge backlog. Yeah. Um, speaking of backlog, I restarted Shin Megami Tensei Five <laughs> because they are going to re um, do the game. You know, like um, how it's called, like Persona Four Golden, Persona Five Royal. Yeah, you know that. Um, that um, there's actually original versions of the game. So there's just a Persona Four, there's just a Persona Three, no FES, and there's just a Persona Five that exists. Yeah. Uh, but Atlas, every once in a while, and I kind of hate when they do this. Thankfully, I wasn't a fan of them, and I didn't know about them um, whenever they did this a lot, and they stopped doing it for the most part. Um, but they will re- re-release their game and add a new uh, uh, story or, like, add on to the main story and do a bunch of quality of life updates mm. um, and then and bundle the DLC and then also add new DLC. I see. Uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit sketch, but usually it makes a better version of the game. Okay. Um, so it's like, it's like, it's like a kind of, like, 50 50 win lose we gotta get you kind of deal yeah we, we gotta get you finished we we have to get you to finish dark souls remastered as well like just on the yeah. top of those games that you're playing but i want to play that with you though so I know, we gotta we gotta sit down and do that reason i'm saying is because as soon yeah. as you're done with dark souls i think i think oh i'm starting elden ring yeah <laughs> have you already started elden ring no, I'm going to after we do Dark Souls. Oh, no, I'm absolutely. Saying. Sorry, Elden Ring, because they announced the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. That's coming yeah, the DLC. Out. And I, Which is also when have, uh, the new version of Shin Megami Tensei Five drops, is no what I was going to say. Busy. That's funny. <laughs> no way. Busy, <laughs> yeah. busy, busy time. Busy time for them. Bus- busy time to be a JRPG and a Souls I, fan. No. <laughs> uh, so for, I, I, do have to, I do have to confess a sin. I have not yet beaten Elden Ring. It's been out for a while. I know oh. I need to play and beat it. There's a really cool yeah, mod for Elden it. Ring. It's called Seamless Co-op. So it, it, it lifts a lot of the restrictions of online multiplayer and allows you and your teammate just kind of like to permanently just be in the same world without letting oh, anyone else. We should else. do that one day. I think that would be a pretty primo way for us to try out try out the game together and explore it. Well, maybe after I beat it once. Yeah. Or, like, do a lot of it. Dude, that's going to take so the long. Most part. It's so easy for me to get sidetracked. I started two different characters just to yeah, be like, my, all right, my friend, I can't keep it My friend beat the game. Of, yeah. But, yeah. I heard Elden Ring. My, my teacher, when the game was coming out when I was in high school, my tech teacher was like, dude, I'm so hyped for Elden Ring. I'm like, oh, what's that? I also need to be at Cyberpunk. Um, that's another game. Rocket I have, I have a backlog. It's actually really good. Like my friend, I got him into cyberpunk. He's further than me now, and he only played for one day. <laughs> uh, I, I have a huge backlog of games, and I actually cut most of them because I just, like... Um, so I think what a lot of people have is issues with backlogs. Um, and I'll be honest with you, it's okay to drop games, and it's something I kind of realized, is that, like, I'm probably never going to play this game, ever, so I'm just going to drop it. And that's what I did with a few games, like Fire Emblem Three Houses. I don't think I'll ever play it. I'm just going to drop it. Pikmin 3 Deluxe, I've already played the game, so I kind of just own the new version just in case I want to replay it because I do like the game. Yeah. Uh, and I do plan on doing a marathon of all the Pikmin games. Um, so that's a bit of a, a, a of a exception. But like Xenoblade right. Chronicles, I own the game, have not touched it. Honestly, don't think I ever will. Probably will never play it. I dropped that game. Isn't that, um, isn't that the harem sim- simulator? I think that's the Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Ah, Postal One, a game I got halfway through. <laughs> I, 
I like Postal 2 a lot. Postal mm-hmm. 1, I'm going to be honest with you, kind of fucking sucks. <laughs> ah. It's it's not fun, and it doesn't have the goofy charm that Postal 2 has because this game was supposed to be a serious, edgy game at the time. Yeah. I respect it, but I don't really like the gameplay, so uh, I'll, I dropped it. I um, but yeah, I dropped a lot of games, um, and now my backlog seems more manageable on games I actually will care about. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been grinding um, a lot of uh, RPGs. Also, um, <laughs> a bit of a side tangent. Uh, not a side tangent, but a bit of a, of a I, guess I, uh, I guess, a gooner talk. <laughs> uh, I beat Kaiju Princess, um, wow. uh, uh, one, the, the second one. Not the sequel, but the second game that came out. And I 100%ed Kaiju Princess 1. <laughs> I platinumed it. <laughs> no. um, I did that for Rocco. Yeah. Uh, he wanted me to do it. Um, so I did it. Um, Rocco, don't do not do things because Rocco wants you to do them. Rocco doesn't have any good ideas. That's true. I will say that there's this game called Take Me to the Dungeon that I beat last year. It is a, another one of those games. Yep. Um, they are going to remake the game into a safer work version, which I'm actually excited for because then I could recommend it to you and there won't be any porn in it because the game is actually good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah a it's, legit, like, it's a legit... No, it's, a, it's a car... It's The thing, issue is it's like a hand... It's like, it's not a deck builder. It's a hand builder. And I hate those games, but even I had fun, I which know. is surprising because I, I despise those games. Um, but yeah. I don't know. I've been, I've been gaming a lot. Um, I, w- I will say I have been playing one game very frequently. Um, a new Dominion oh God. game came out on mobile Dominion? and Steam. Yeah, just Dominion. Oh, yeah. It's I a have really it good. It's a really, really good, just Dominion port. It, like, it, we it, should tr- try it because I also have it on Steam. We absolutely can do it. Yeah, I, I can download it on Steam. I have it on my phone, but um, it's just a good <laughs> yeah, app. Fair. You get the base set for free, and then you can join in onto multiplayer queues. And if they're using <laughs> certain setups and stuff, you can just if if they're using expansions, you get to play their expansions for free. It's just really cool. Oh, um, cool. I'm getting a bit tired of just playing base set, so I might actually splurge on some of the expansions. But no, it's, it's a solid game. Great oh, game. I have a story of splurging. Um, oh, I was no. gonna save this for later, um, but since we're on the topic, uh, so um, uh, I've been playing every. I mean, there's this game. I, I play gotcha games. Um, first of yeah. all, let me just say that um, I play gotcha games. I'm sorry if you don't know what gotcha games are, uh, if you don't know what gotcha games are, um, you can watch the real talk episode. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I'll probably just flash it on screen and where three, I dive a little bit deep into it. Two, two, one. one. It's um, there, right here. <laughs> uh, but um, I um, <laughs> I I've been I, I I play this game called Blue Archive, which everyone uh, I will say everyone on the hallway clowns me for playing it. Um, uh, as they usually do for anything that I do that's anime related, because um, <laughs> I manage to choose the worst of the worst things according to them. Um, but uh, I play a lot of Blue Archive. Very good game. Very, very, very fantastic story. Um, uh, but but um, there's this character that got uh, re-ran. Um, and I will say that um, a few days ago, I spent five hours uh, reading um, a bunch of like these like side stories to get enough gems yeah. to pull for the character. Because... Um, I didn't have enough, and and, uh, and uh, I was too, uh, I got so unlucky that no. I didn't pull the character. No. So your boy may or may not have spent money on the game. <laughs> cool. I have I have a little bit of a splurging story as well. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned it on the podcast before. Um, I I am a I am a Warhammer 40k fan. Uh, oh really? Yeah. I dude, I need to talk to I. Have I told you about the, my coworker that told me about 40k lore? You. We, I, th- I feel like we've touched on it before. Yeah, but you've never told me you knew about 40k. Yeah, no, nah, dude, I love 40k. White scars are my dude, favorite. I, White scars are my favorite Space Marine faction, and then or I've been, I've been, I've faction faction. Ah, shoot, no, Battle I've, Sisters of Battle. It's really hard, man. I could go into it, I've been, but this will become more I've, I've, episode. I've been, <laughs> I've been asking because uh, I recently got into Gunpla. I still haven't finished my Gundam. Um, by the way, I've just been too busy to build it. Also, I messed up one of the parts, so I need to figure out, like, maybe probably glue it. <laughs> it's my first build, okay? I, I, was, I was guaranteed to mess up somewhere. Um, but I've always wanted to try out 40K because of my coworker who got me, uh, like, interested in the story. He told me about um, in the, uh, uh, the story about the Imperium um, and just, like, the guy himself, like, the, the guy in charge of the Imperium. The Emperor. Um, yeah, the... The Emperor. Yeah. His, his, emperor him. of Mankind. 
whatever like he's like connected to this like like fucking chair and i think that chair is like a portal to like something okay all right all right so i'm I'm, (laughs) I'm gonna i'm gonna let you know so emperor of mankind (sighs) warhammer 40k incident of the universe like in the year 40,000. uh where everyone's at war yeah there's this like guy he's known as the emperor of mankind he's like this super big big hulking giant of a man like literally like the most the gen- oh, yeah. most genetically superior human to ever exist. He looks like a Bucky character. Yeah. No, actually. He's, like, in this golden armor and stuff. When he was alive. When he was alive. He's in this, yeah, like, but, big yeah. golden armor. He's, like, super smart. He's, like, a sci- He's literally the most smartest, genius person to live. He's kind of I mean, written he's up to dead, be, like... technically. Yeah. He's, he's kind of written up to be, like, this messiah type. Warhammer's a uh, satire. It's a, it's a sci-fi space grimdark oh, really? satire. Yeah. So I should I should know that. A lot of the characters kind of satires and kind of plays and like satires of characters. So like the Emperor of Mankind is a satire of like kind of like a personification of like Jeebus, you know? Well, well he's also Be- like in a really funny scenario where like if if he would have died sooner, he would have just came back. <laughs> That's what my friend told me. Maybe I don't know enough about the Emperor actually cuz I Oh, I, so yeah. He he's like this dude who like if he dies he will just come back. Oh, um, I can't remember what the term for that is. I thought the emperor. I don't was like remember. That. I can't remember. Yeah, I know no. Vulcan is let that thing. I can't remember Vulcan. Oh, God, oh, I don't man. know if it's oh, like no. a, this... I don't know if it's like a persistent or I'm something gonna like ramble. that. The problem is I haven't really talked out loud about Warhammer, so I could just ramble. And that's, that's oh, that's... dude, go go ahead. Because here's the thing, my um, that's this how me and my coworker. Okay. We'll just get through closing hours, which is him explaining 40k lore to me. And it was actually really interesting. I really hope that they um, like either written a book or something about like the Emperor, because I would oh, totally read so that ma- shit. There's so many audiobooks on <laughs> Warhammer. There's so, they make so I many heard, audiobooks. Yeah. I heard um, they were pretty good too. Is Vulcan a? But yeah, he's like this dude who's like, if he dies, he'll come back, but no one knows that. So one of his sons saves his life. Perpetual. That's what they're called. Perpetual. That's what they're called. Yeah. Yeah. So he's one of those dudes. So uh, Warhammer, <laughs> setting for anyone who doesn't know, it's 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 the Milky Way galaxy set in the year forty thousand. There's a shit ton happening. Uh, the uh, <laughs> humanity has become super xenophobic, but not against other uh, races. Literally against like other alien species, to where they're like in this whole, this really fervor battle against yeah. them, almost too religious. There's this big guy who's the emperor, hated religion, didn't like the fact that people were referring to him as a god. He quelched that, but then he died, and then humanity went back to re- worshiping him as a messiah, and he really didn't like that. And now it's kind of ironic. Um, he died because uh, he he genetically created these sons that he just infused some of his own DNA plus animal DNA into, and they're these big, giant, <laughs> like really burly, baki looking type characters. And uh, they're yeah, really them, smart, and they're really one strong. One of them betrayed them, right? One yeah. of them betrayed them. The others, like, joined his side, the betrayer side. Some of them didn't. Uh, it was a whole fiasco. Things happened. Shit went south. And now humanity's, like, on the verge of, like, losing to everything. They have these really yeah. big, giant, genetically strong buff warrior guys that, like, dedicate their whole life. They almost die just to get indoctrinated into this army. They get, like, all these extra organs and, like, surgical implants put into them to make them, like, biologically killing machines it's crazy um it's really cool um there's also like other shit going on there's like this religious cult type thing for the emperor that's gotten a lot of power that worships the emperor and like if you don't worship the emperor we're gonna kill you um they're not allowed to have men in their military so they only have women in their military called the adeptus sororitas it's not a horny thing i I, i'm genuine about this they're so cool (laughs) the game studio did for a time try to sell it kind of as like ooh, like hey play these they're hot ladies and then like a lot of people are like this is bullshit we don't like this this is dumb and they were like okay um well they're they're just I really like the orcs, battles. Though. They're oh orcs are so cool. A desert They're pretty cool. Look into <laughs> them. Uh, if someone um, thinks that they're hot, they're dumb. They're stupid, and they're meathead. Sure. Uh, orcs are cool. Those that, that is probably they, my favorite faction. Do you want? I love orcs? that they're. Yeah, so I'm gonna explain it for someone who doesn't know much about 40k. I'll you other explain than it, and then I'll, I'll I'll blindly correct you, and then also. So yeah. to my knowledge, orcs probably have one of the most overpowered abilities like ever mm. it's just that they're too dumb uh to even realize it um that i pretty much like any th- they have like 
Okay, I was about to spoil One Piece. Uh, I'm going to stop that. Um, basically, if they can think of something, um, pretty much it will um, uh, pretty much happen. Like, if they believe in it. It's like, it's, for the most it's part. collective reality bending. Co- collective, ability. yeah. Because, or, so there's something called psychers, which are like people that are have a strong connection to something called the warp. The warp is like, it's called the immaterium. Anything that's not physical exists in the warp. So, like, emotions, like, concepts, things like that, that's the warp. And the warp is, like, all crazy, and it's where people who have psychic powers draw their abilities from. It's like <laughs> magic, but not magic, pretty much. That's what it is. Orcs Magical texture Orcs have an innate psychic ability where if they collectively believe something, it happens. It's true for them. So, like, for instance, uh, a really common example, orcs are green. Orcs believe that yeah. they're the bestest because they're green. Uh, they also talk with really dumbed down Cockney type accents and stuff. So I'm gonna use really <laughs> dumb sounding words that sound stupid out of my mouth, and that's because that's just literally how orcs use it. Um, yeah. But orcs thinks that they they the bestest, so the best. they the bestest because yeah. green is the bestest color in the in the whole galaxy. Um, they also think that uh, if they paint something red, they they associate colors with different things. But they think that yeah. red is like <laughs> fast. Red is the fast color. So if you if you paint your bike, your war bike, big red, and it go, it, it, it will go from like being like this hunk of, it'll, it'll go like if you paint like a bicycle, you know, in a war, orc's mind, if you paint like a child's bike, you know, a child's bike goes like five miles an hour at the fastest. Mm-hmm. If an orc got a hold of a bike, learned how to ride it, and then painted that little children's bicycle red, and then he started riding on it, it would like to the orc, it would start going, it, it's supposed to go fast. And so the orc would ride this red bike and it would, instead of going like five miles an hour, like what would realistically happen, like the orc's able to zoom like 85 miles an hour on this bike just because he painted it (laughs) red. And that's the only thing different about it than when the orc originally got his hands on it. And so that's what the orcs do. It's so funny. It's super cool. They also think blue is lucky. So they paint things blue and it makes it harder for things to hit it. Uh, I think they think uh-huh. black is like rich or in- encourages wealth. So like the richest oh. orcs like paint themselves black and their like weapons black. We should, uh, we should probably explain that um, 40k is a tabletop like. It's game. a tabletop wargaming game, but also a lot of people get into it just because of the lore. Orcs are also cool. Um, they're fungus people. They're literally fungu- fungus humanoid. They're fungus giant humanoid brutish creatures. Uh, they were created way British. before humanity when there's this giant war between, like, pretty much think Terminators and uh, these creatures called the Old Ones. Um, old Ones are, like, these old ancient race of things that just create civilizations in different races. They created orcs. They created something called Eldar, which are, like, space elves. They're lame. You don't need to learn about them. They're responsible for everything wrong in 40K. Uh, and then the Necrons, which are, like, Terminator people. Uh, Terminators wanted to fight the old ones because the old ones didn't give the Terminators uh, long life because the Terminators, before they became Terminators, like had super short lives because their planets that they lived on were super radioactive and they died from cancer at the age of like 20. So they got in this big fight. Nice. Uh, old ones like saw them as a threat because the Terminators used something called Catan. Uh, look it up. I like that one too, too long. Look it up. Yeah, Catan. Uh, which are pretty much these gods that the Terminator people uh, turn into fract- like fractals of themselves and use these giant gods as like engines and like power sources to power their technology. Old ones saw the Necrons as a threat because of this. They made the orcs and the Eldar to fight off. It's called the War in Heaven or some shit like that. Anyways, the orcs used to be called Krorks that were much smarter and knew how to use their ability much better. We don't know exactly how that looks. And then the orcs, after there was nothing else to fight, got bored and started to devolve and started to infight with each other. And now orcs just literally live to do nothing but fight. And once an orc gets on a planet, there's it's really just downhill from there. Because once you kill an orc, he just kind of dies and decomposes into nasty spores. And then those spores just create more spores and giant fungal creature thingies that then just spawn orcs. So once you kill an orc, like 15 will come back after one's dead. Orcs are cool. 
I don't know Warhammer <laughs> ramble over. I guess uh, we can talk about war. I can I can give you a Warhammer. <laughs> I can give you a Warhammer crash course, so maybe a bit more in depth, and it would literally maybe. be the entire episode. Yeah, maybe we can maybe do that. That'd be it. Sounds interesting. Honestly. Anyways, orcs are cool. White scars are cool. Also, sisters of battle are cool. Uh, yeah. That's my welcome to. Thanks for showing up to my Warhammer TED talk. Uh, I you can no ask me questions in anything. the comments. I had no idea you knew anything oh, about dude, Warhammer. Warhammer 40K's, <laughs> Warhammer 40K is so cool. I want so my, the, my my whole point for that spiel is my splurge story is I have. I, I want to start getting into the tabletop a little bit, just a little mm-hmm. bit, and I'm oh, really, so really close. It is really expensive, and I'm really, really oh. close to buying some Warhammer sets of, like, my three favorite factions. Well, do you have, like, model kit stuff? No, I need to get paints and stuff, and I've never done any mini painting before, which is why it's, like, kind of bad, because, like, yeah. I've never done it before, and here I am, we're like, oh, hurt, 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 I really want to play White Scars, yay! White scars are space marines that just go fast. That that's, that's I have thing about them. I have like a big like um like a basic set of um of um of just like model kit stuff just because I got like a um, a little like kit for um so I can build a like, gunpla because I yeah. want my best friends into gunpla. Yeah. So I wanted to get into it myself. So um also if anyone's wondering, I'm building a high grade desi. Cause I thought gun, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. I know jack shit about Gundam, mm-hmm. but I just for some reason naturally gravitated towards Gundam Wing, just because I like the designs a lot, or whatever they're called, the Wing yeah. Gundams. I just think they're cool. They just look cool as fuck. And Death Scythe has a giant scythe. I kind of have a thing for Death Scythe things, things with scythes and yeah. death. I think it's cool. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just, I just, I just, I bought that one. So I need, to, I do need to build it one day. Mm-hmm. Which is also why I wanted a bigger desk. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I just, mm, I wanted to get into uh, 40K. Uh, just because I, I, I mean, I actually enjoyed making Model Kit. I think it was pretty relaxing when I did it. Uh, just something to do. I think they're fun. Also, I wouldn't mind painting. Um, I also wanted to get back into art, but I, I don't have a sketchbook and I don't feel like learning right now. Yeah. But I should totally do that again. Uh, and actually learn how to properly do it but uh if you're wanting to get into 40k i mean i can recommend a a podcast to listen to that i that i was i was recommended to get me into 40k by a friend at work uh it's called Mm -hmm. adeptus ridiculous and it kind of focuses more on like the sillier stupid stuff uh i don't know it's pretty chill adeptus ridiculous oh cool Uh, that's the podcast that i listen to to get into warhammer 40k um Ooh, I can connect with tangents. So there's a server I'm a part of that's part of this VTuber um, that uh, referenced episode one. Yeah. Um, I also want to say that this is like the second podcast I've ever um, uh, had where the first episode was about VTubers. <laughs> yeah. uh, but um, uh, first of all, to finish one of the tangents of me spending money on Blue Archive, yes. I posted. Uh, there's a um, there's a chat where you pull. Uh, you post your um, your polls, uh, like your um, your um, like you just like show like your luck or whatever. Just like show what you got. Yeah. I posted mine. Um, I'm posting the image in here just to save it. I said uh, this wasn't a big victory. I had the spark. Sparking means that like you you um, pulled enough times the game uh gave you enough materials to just get the character that's what sparking is yeah uh and i said i may or may not have spent money uh 18 uh and then mm-hmm. someone responded thank you for sponsoring the blue archive anime and i got like uh six um like praise like things yeah. <laughs> um the only reason why i pulled for those characters is because they're really good for this raid boss that i really like i think blue archive does really cool raid bosses and i mm. love all of them um but there's one called gauze which is also funny enough really unpopular um mm. Just because of how character dependent he is, but I have all the characters for him. Um, he's also just really fucking hard, but I think he has the coolest gimmick ever. Um, there's like, I can explain it a little bit. Um, you start off in a train platform. Oh, you don't really know how Blue Archive plays, anyways. Is that auto battler? Kind yeah. of. Well, your don't characters you, like, automatically. Push your characters just to select them to like get out of like cover and then shoot the people out in the battlefield no. or something like that. Mm-mm. Yeah. So your characters will automatically move. If there is cover, they will automatically go in the cover. I see. Um, and that reduces um, chances of being hit. So mm-hmm. you can't control your characters. And they also have 
three passive skills. One of them is their main attack. Two of them are like just passive skills, either that bust the character, yeah. debuff the enemies, is a, either another attack. And then what you can control is their EX skills, which is like kind of like works like Clash Royale, mm. where you get the little icon, you drag it out, um, and it does something. Either yeah. it busts people, um, or it like does a most of the time it just does a really uh, like a strong attack, either AOE or something like that. Yeah. And <clears throat> The raid bosses are designed around like certain characters and their skills. Like there's this boss uh, that requires you to do um, status uh, status effects that are for crowd controlling. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know how to describe it because the game just calls it crowd control effects, um, kind of like stuns and stuff. I think that boss is cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, the the one I'm trying to grind for, which is why I really want to pull this character because she's probably the best unit for it, um, has it to where you will focus fire on one enemy and all your other units will also target that one enemy, which you need for the second phase of that fight, uh, where the um, the boss splits into four and you have to guess, no, he splits into three and you have to guess which one's the real one, otherwise well, you won't do any damage and you gotta focus fire onto it. Oh, shit. Um, but also, it just does a lot of damage. I already had a focus firing unit. Um, and the first part of the boss is you're on a train platform spawns and enemies the train will pick a random side and then uh, after that it'll go to the other side and they'll go into the middle and that's where you use um other characters like repo units that um, move your units into a specific area there's another free unit that you can get that uh, re uh repositions the, your units and also shields them i already have them um i've been playing the game for a while so i have a decent amount of characters um uh, that boss has a lot of gimmicks like healing isn't good, um, but shields gives you um, the the shielding um, is increased like the defense you get and it's like stronger. Yeah. So the game wants you to not heal but shield, um, and also move your units and then also um, um, focus fire onto the boss um, and also debuff it, which I, I think is a really cool gimmick, um, and it just plays really well. So I was like, ooh, I love this boss. I love grinding it. Um, so I got the unit that's really good for it. So I'm like, oh, and I spent money on it. Um, I have spent money on this game before, not for like the premium currency. There's like a, a little thing you can get that gives you like gems, but it also gives you like quality of life. Like you get more like stuff for like your daily stuff. If you like play gacha games, you know what I mean? Like you grind right. materials and shit mm -hmm. in every gacha game. Every gacha game is different, but yeah, I was just... I was just grinding that out, but I I, <laughs> I thought that response was funny. That someone was saying I sponsored the Blue Archive anime. Is there a Blue Archive anime out. coming out? Oh shoot, okay. It is in the works. It is in the works. I'm very excited. I think the story of this game is fantastic. It's it's like, this game is so weird because most people don't like it because they think oh I'm not gonna say that word, but oh sags yeah. Um, uh. It's 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 ironic shit posting. Right, um, right. In fact, it's actually supposed to be making fun of like the JP fan base for the most part. Mm. Um, it's a lot of ironic shit posting, but it also gatekeeps the community. Like they kind of just gatekeep themselves by doing that, Good which might not that. be a bad thing. It might not be a bad thing because Persona wasn't gatekept, and now I have to deal with like Persona <laughs> retards. Who, who was that, guy, <laughs> that rave like almost got banned. That like he he would purposely I he, I don't know. He would <sighs> There's a lot of weird Persona fans, and I wish we gatekept the hell out of this here. <laughs> um, but um, uh, the game kind of gatekeeps itself, but it has like a phenomenal story, and it's like it's just it's just so good. Yeah. It's it's not like um, it's not like um, like the main character is a teacher. Um, it's not even like a guy. It's mm. it's technically like it's it's like not known because so you can self insert. I don't really like self insert characters. Right. Um, so I don't really do that, but uh, it's just this teacher, and he just tries to like, in the worst case scenario, just it's just him trying to do the right thing, mm. uh, for the most part, and like looking after their students, even though all of them are maniacs and terrorists, like actual terrorists. Uh -huh. <laughs> I remember explaining um to one of my friends who was like, "Oh, what is this character?" And I'm just like, he was like, "Choose the nicest character," and I and I and I, and I didn't even say this like as a joke. I'm just like, man, but they're all terrorists. I don't really know who to pick. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this one robs banks for fun. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I was like, I don't know. Cool. Uh, good, good game. Uh, I spent money there. That was my splurge story. Is that I spent like, I, I've spent enough money on Blue Archive to where I can say that I uh, passed my friend. Because uh, he spent money on that game, even though he doesn't play it that much. I don't know why he did. Um, but he spent like like $40 on, 
on the game. And I'm pretty sure I've spent more than him now. So just from playing the game for a long time. The closest uh, I'm, 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 I mean, I, I guess I said, I said mine was a splurge story. It was more of um, a, a close call in a splurge story, because I, you know, like Warhammer figurines, like even for a small set, is like sixty bucks. Well, mine's like an accumulative like, splurge. Yeah. 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 I, don't know. I spent a lot of money. Um, also, speaking of spending a lot of money, uh, actually, maybe not. I haven't gone to the arcade in a month, and I actually went for the first time. No way. Um, and I thought I was going to be terrible at all my favorite games. Um, lo and behold, that was probably my best session I've ever had. No way. Um, turns out all you need to do is just take a break. <laughs> um, it's true. Because I've been, I've been like plateauing in rhythm games. I haven't really been improving that much. Yeah. I've been improving really slowly. Um, and I mean, that's just natural. Uh, but uh, I just, I don't know, I took a month break. Um, I played, um, I was, the first game I played was uh, Pump It Up, which... I would like to say, not that anyone cares, but my arcade officially has two Pump It Up Phoenix cabinets, which is awesome, because that means that the people, because usually it was, um, so Pump It Up has two versions. Uh, the newest version that came out in 2023 is called Pump It Up Phoenix, um, and that's going to be the newest version. Um, and it has like new scores, new everything, like you have to like create a new account for it, a new servers, all that shit. Like, like completely like just like enhanced version of the game like a very big leap forward i haven't played pump it up enough to really care or like understand how big of a leap it is um because the last version was pump it up xx yeah. and i don't know the history behind that but like xx contains like the very first version all the way to the newest version which was pump it up xx um um but um we had an xx cab and we had a phoenix cab and the phoenix cab lets you use your um um am pass which is like the little smart card that saves your data um hold on sorry i'm on twitter i, I multitask uh brain rot on twitter you, you, while doing this how dare you hold on i i i won't lie i kind of i kind of dissociated for a second and you you said i haven't gone to the arcade in a month and i, I was thinking back to man what if i played waka again oh dude so you're kind of real for that <laughs> oh is it oh yeah but they have Did two Phoenix Cavs. Those videos and videos that we played? I'm sorry, not to Yeah, no, he, no, he sent me them. I was so happy seeing yeah. them play. Um, what was it? Um, what's her? What's? Oh, I don't, I don't know if I can say her name. Jimmy's girl, which I is call, what I refer to her as. I call her T Diddy. I refer to her as Jimmy's girl. <laughs> uh, I've done that multiple times on video, um, and it's kind of funny. But um, I have, um, I've. Um, so they sent me a clip of them being like, I want to say fuck you some guy for showing me Waka because now I will know that Waka exists and I won't be able to play it. <laughs> yeah, that, I, you know what? I remember that now, yeah. She, it was, it was awesome because like, I, love, I, well, I love Waka. Waka, so even if um, that is the game I always introduce to people who are new to rhythm games because that's the game that also got me. That's one of two games that got me into rhythm games is Groove Custom and Waka. Um, and I probably would have never gone into the genre if it wasn't for those two games. It's just, it's so easy, but at the same time, it's so fun. And then that can also get really hard. Um, same thing with Groove Coaster. And I'm just like, man, this game's peak. Um, it's also just so cool because you're like playing a giant circle and you're like moving your arms and shit. Uh, in the later stages, you have to like go on the top, uh, move your arms. You have to do crossovers. You have to cross your hands and shit. Yeah. It's crazy. I had to, um, uh, the, what do you, I, 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 of when I was trying to play, I really I I'd like use the back of my hand to slide along the machine, because I doing yeah. what the fronts of my hand it it, it 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 caused too much friction. So I use my fingernails to like slide against. Uh, this is why people wear gloves when they play it. Yeah. Yeah, but I um I will um if you ever play it again, bring gloves. Um, just like cheap ones, but that's what I do. I always have gloves on me, Waka gloves. Um, but yeah, I played arcade games and I was very happy. Um. Uh, I got new high scores on all the stages I played. Um, I was, uh, I, I, um, I guess for reference, um, I'm terrible at pump it up, but I'm finally like comfortable with um, single nines. Yeah. Uh, there's two modes, well, technically three, kind of, um, but there's two like main modes. It's um, singles and doubles. Yeah. Um, doubles requires you to go on both of the pads at once and hit okay. notes for all of them, so you have ten notes to deal with. Um, while singles has um, um, uh, five notes to deal with. It's different than DDR because DDR only has four notes, yeah. and then doubles will have eight notes. And it's up, down, left, right on DDR, and on um, pump it up, it's uh, 
um, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, the diagonal, and then also the middle. Um, okay. I don't know why I like pump it up more, but I, I, I don't like DDR that much. Um, but yeah, I was really happy because um, our location, uh, Round 1 announced that they are bringing Step Maniacs into Round 1. We don't have it at our location, but we have two Phoenix cabinets, which makes me happy as a pump it up player because pump it up at my arcade, it's popular, but it's not like the most popular game ever on the, whenever I play because I play on the weekdays instead of weekends. So there's always one cabinet available, so all the tryhards will be like, hogging the Phoenix cab. So I just have to deal with like the really shitty um, XX cab. But now that there's two Phoenix cabs, I'm like, oh, someone really good can play Phoenix. Well, I can also play Phoenix as well which is the new version, which I want to play the new version because it has all the songs that I recognize, uh, which was my original criticism of Pump It Up was that it has like zero songs that I know. And I was kind of like shocked. I'm like, damn, not even like EDM songs that I know from like people I know. Right. Um, and then I'm just like, holy shit, they have Galaxy Collapse from like Osu. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? They have, they have fucking, they have, they have, like, they, they have that good tech. I'm like, that's like the rhythm game song. Holy. I'm like, wow, that's so awesome. And I was like, that's Kino. I don't know. I like the game a lot. Um, I didn't play Groove Coaster, but I played um, uh, Sound Voltex, and I also popped off on that game, too. I was really happy. I was like, dude, I can do um, Exhaust 5, which is like pretty good for someone who's like mid-game. Yeah. I was like, wow. I need to get more people into rhythm games, but like, I, I wish I had um, someone who like also wanted to take them serious so where I can uh, play with them, but unfortunately... Fortunately, I don't have that person yet, yeah, <laughs> so I, I, maybe one day. I, I, one day, I, I don't think I could be that person, considering the fact that whenever I play a game, I do it to shit around. And that, that mm. infuriates that infuriates Raka so much. That infuriates me. You can do that with rhythm games. It just yeah. depends on the game. Yeah. I think if you wouldn't mind learning how to shuffle dance, if you played um, if you played a dance or stardom, you got a group of friends shitting around, that's probably the most fun I've ever had at the arcade, which is messing around with people like just rad just random strangers yeah. playing learn how to dance, dance rush i guess it's not hard it's fun i like i don't know i really like them that's another one of my favorite games i also got a um new high score on that too yeah. on my favorite stage which i was happy very cool i was gonna say slight uh, I, slight side story and tangent because i, uh, I mentioned jimmy uh jimmy. jimmy came over to my house and uh we made we made homemade food. We made a lot of homemade food. He was over here. We were supposed to record one of those days, and instead, instead of being Jimmy, he made your break, which I want to apologize for, because we were supposed to. Oh no, I. Day, I had no desk, so it was fine. But we, um, Jimmy came over and we made like a. It's like a Russian empanada. It was really good. And then the oh. very next day, me and Jimmy like like the next two days, me and Jimmy made our own homemade beef stock so we got like we went to the local butcher near my area and we got some like center cut beef bones and stuff we got some like carrots oh. and potatoes and celery stock and some thyme we got all the stuff and we made like this <laughs> real we like cooked it for eight hours we made this like simmer down beef stock it was so good and then we used that in a beef stew recipe and oh my god I, I've never been so happy before. I, I'm really starting to, like, really focus on, like, doing home cooking and meals and stuff and making those more often. Oh, that's cool. And I'm finally, I like, I've always, I've always known I can cook, you know. I know I can cook, but I didn't really <laughs> realize how cook. easy it would, I didn't realize how easy it would come to me, especially for, like, recipes that I've literally never tried before. And yeah. making this beef stew, like, made me realize, holy shit, like, damn, I made this. That's so cool. So uh, I, I've been very fulfilled this these last couple of weeks with just focusing on home cooking and stuff like that. Lately. I wish I had the time to make more complicated dishes because I really like learning how to make new things. I think um, enchiladas, the one I made, yeah. that was really fun to make. Very, very good food. Yeah, I really liked it. I don't know. I had fun making that. I haven't learned anything new recently, but um, awesome. I, don't know, I like cooking as well. It's, Beef stock? Huh? The beef stock and the beef stew recipe were not too hard. They were actually pretty simple hmm. to follow. And it's uh, also cool to did, use your, your, your meal scraps, you know? I did I did make, um like, really, like, fire fries. Because, um, mm -hmm. again, you know me. As I explained, I'm pretty good at making fries yeah. for the most part. Not that fries are hard, but I'm like, I don't know. It just came natural to me. I'm just, I'm just kind of the fry that's guy. That's your shit. That's your go-to. Uh, like, that's my go-to. I love making fries. 
it's, it's always fun. Yeah. But uh, I preseasoned them, and mm, before I I preseasoned them because I'm like I want to preseason them yeah. before I um before I, I dip them into the oil, um which kind of changes the, t- the, the um the taste to it a I bit. Bet. Um, but um, God, I seasoned it perfectly, man. I was like, oh my God, it's so good. I want to. It's so good. I want to learn how. I, I want to try my my attempt at home cooked fries because I I that is one thing I've not tried to make. I've not tried to make my own homemade fries. It's kind of scary at first because I I uh, I was terrified because it's oil. It's fucking yeah, it's fucking oil, man. Oil, oil is scary. Yeah. I'm used to oil shit's, when I'm shit's. making like beef steak apanado or like chabrac. So I mean, I could I could yeah. try I could try making a fries, you know. Hey, baby. But. I um, I don't know. I mean, I can also, I also make um, I can make taco shells, but those are um. I don't know. Those those are also hard because it, it yeah. just hurts to make because my I have hair on my arms, oh, um, yeah. so if, like if anything like flies onto it, I'll feel it. Yeah. Some, it just it just kind of hurts when I make um, yeah. uh, taco shells. So I try not to make taco shells, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I've been I've been, I've been I've been I've been, I've been gaming. I haven't been cooking though, but but I've been I've been gaming. gaming. You've been cooking. I've been cooking <laughs> a lot, man. Oh. I tried a new game today, um, a game I've been keeping up with uh, for a while. Um, it's called Window Kill, Window and Kill. it is so cool. Um, it is a roguelike twin stick shooter, Ooh. except well, there's no stages. It's just like, but it's also like those action roguelikes where you try to live as long. Well, usually there's a timer, but this one's like you try to live as long as you can. Yeah. Um, except it uses your windows. Like it creates windows and it uses windows as the game itself. Huh. I don't know. You want me to show you right now? I'll show it to. Um, I'll probably show yeah, gameplay of this, but I, I mean, can show you it right now. You can show it to me, and I'll give like a live action, like live action commentary of it, and describe it to you the see, best of my ability. You see this? My screen right okay, now. Okay, I see a screen. He's got Window Kill on his Steam right now. He's opening it. I'm he's, gonna click play. He's, he's I'm gonna go it. to my desktop. I don't know what my Twitter is, feed is. Is de- well, okay. So what happened is like all these <laughs> all these windows just popped out at the same moment, and like <laughs> each window say? is a different aspect of the game itself, and all the windows like kind of and it, all the windows kind of react with another. So all the all the windows are dynamic. Like it uses actual windows, and you just yeah. you can shoot the window to open it more. And you just try to survive, and it's just like it goes on top of like everything. I can open Discord right now, and it's just it's just it's just there. And there's gonna be enemies and bosses that will show up, and those will have their own windows. There's some power ups that you can get that are just windows that you can drag on the screen. Like there's one that does like AOE damage, and you just drag it where you want it to go. Interesting. It's crazy. This game is cool, man. Yeah. So like it, it's this it's this window. If is I open the shop, it's another moving. window. If I open a shop, it's just another window. Whoa, okay. It's fucking pausing the game's another window. I don't know. I just think it's dope as hell. That's crazy. Like all, 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 of the, yeah. all of these are individual. I just think it's it's so cool. It's it's so it's so key now. The world, the the windows are coalescing and collapsing as the game progresses. It's cool. I, I, I hate. Did, I, hate... I did such a shit job trying to describe it. Yeah, I, I do. I hate Twitter because half the time I'll be scrolling, it'll be like a meme. Other time it's just like normal artwork, or it's like the most vile artwork I've ever seen. And then I just scroll more, and it's just like the most brain rot political debate ever. Why are you on it then? I don't know, man. Twitter, Twitter's like it's like it's, a drug. it's like a disease. Yeah, because <laughs> like I, it's like I scroll, I see something funny. Two seconds later, I see like the most like 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 horrific like tragedy ever, and then I see like the most like annoying political debate, and and then and then. And then just just randomly, I see like the most like like this like <laughs> those like weirdest like drawing just like ever made, and I'm just like bro. Or I see like the most brain rot like um ironic tweet ever, and I'm like, what am I? What am I? What? What, what, what the hell? I don't want to be. And, but here. it's yeah, I don't know. I I'm afraid to open Twitter in public sometimes just because it's like I never know what to expect. You can't control your for you page. There is a like one time I opened Twitter. I, 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 the first thing I saw was this dude get shot in his head. What? And he's just bleeding out. And I'm just like, oh my no God. No way. Wait, how did Twitter allow that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I 
I don't know. It sounds know. like some live leak shit. <laughs> it was some live leak shit. And I'm just like, I'm just like, what the fuck? And then I just see like a meme later, and I'm like, oh my, what? <laughs> it's that's the most brain rot shit ever. I swear, it's terrible. I hate you, Twitter. For those of you that that are unfamiliar, uh, Twitter is uh, now called X. By the way, shut the fuck. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I have like a whole tab thing for me playing Persona Three. I'm a little bit of a tryhard, yeah. kind of, not really. I've been trying not to touch my desk at all. Usually I'll like sidetrack and like look at something or like try to yeah. like look something up, but like because of my setup at the moment, I don't want to touch my desk in order to like not bump the mic and stuff like that. I I counted. I think I've like barely graced it twice. I don't really look at Twitter when I record, but I do always have like stuff that I know. Like I used like when I was talking about video games, I had my Steam like open. Yeah. Like, I, I multi, because I don't have two monitors, so, like, I multitask on my computer, because right. I know, like, I need to, there's certain things I want to talk about, but I need to look at, like, the certain things to, like, jog my memory, mm-hmm. in a way. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just, like, I don't know, I've been getting, window kill is fucking awesome. It looks cool. It Five bucks. Okay. Cool. <laughs> but it reminded me of, like, it's, like, it reminded me of, like, Star Providence, for some reason. Oh, Yeah. You know but it, it's yeah. not ex- it's not exactly like it, but it reminded me of it. I thought Star it was cool. Star Providence is such a good game. Oh, I haven't played it in forever, but I I, I should. I mean, I very much should. It's a nice little roguelike because you don't have to play it to its completion. You can always like stop and come back later, and it's a good pick up and play because it's got that arcade vibe to it. You know, like yeah, I don't know. It's good. It's good. Good game. Good game. Yeah. I have a little. You ready? Up, I have a setup up, uh, update real quick. Oh. So. Oh, where? I've updated my setup to where. Uh huh. I draped a blanket over my monitors <laughs> that then is draped over me. So I have this little blanket bubble that I'm now recording in, in order to try oh. to reduce echo, and slightly muffle external sounds. And that's I my have that's my sh- setup update. <laughs> I have a shock mount for my setup update. I oh. bought a shock mount. Oh. So every time I bonk my mic, it is slightly less terrible. And then whenever I type on my keyboard, you cannot, like, hear the vibrations, which usually I do a somewhat okay job of editing out vibrations. I have to do that all the time because it is both of us, for some reason, we have a really terrible habit of bonking our microphones. Yes. So that's why I bought the shock mount. Bonking mics and also typing furiously. So if I type furiously, you might hear my typing, but you won't hear the vibrations from it, which I don't really know how to describe hearing the vibrations other than editing, although I think it picks up because our audio is pretty sensitive. Yeah. Like, I feel like this a little bit of awesome. meta I keep getting complimented on how good my audio <laughs> comes through whenever I'm, like, online, so that's pretty neat. What did I say? It's, like, the most killer, like, $40 I've ever spent. Dude, it is really good. I have a, I have a dinner you, update. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, continue. A word? Yeah. No, I was going to say, if you, if anyone's in the market for a microphone, like, solo cast costs $60, a regular goes on sale for 40 It is the best microphone you can get for cheap. Yeah. No, take it's, it from it's us. It's so nice. Listen to, Everyone from, listen to our nice, sound, crispy voices as we talk to even you microphones. Me and Rave have the microphone, we and we've an been slowly converting people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sick of everyone's bullshit so uh, we decided to end it with a bang by um enticing murdering with these all the hallway members <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, k- but, uh, we killed every single hallway ma- yeah. speaking of the hallway Ooh. beef has been editing for us recently and he's killed it Dude, i am terrible at editing it's made me realize how bad i am at editing and how much i need to like improve to be fair i only edit podcast episodes i don't really do like a shout editing. out to beef actually i know he's not here but at the moment but good huge for beef, shout out man. he's so good at he's editing good at he's, he's, he's just good at editing he got that dog in him he's funny yeah. and that's all that matters good at editing he's uh, funny i love hanging out with him, man. i love him he's we fun. need him yeah. back we need him back on here <laughs> true i'm sick and tired of this bullshit co-host i have to deal with i don't even remember his name 
But also speaking speaking of um, I may uh, suck ass at editing, but I, I learned Photoshop thanks to Rave Real G Banthers for yeah. teaching me how to use Photoshop. Yeah. Uh, so now I can make thumbnails that don't suck as much. I, I actually liked my last thumbnail. I liked the Derf thumbnail. I thought it was good. I think you did great it's, on it. It's goofy, but that's what I was going for. I, I don't really care about going for serious thumbnails, I but I liked. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I like your goofy thumbnails. I, I enjoy making thumbnails. Um, I know podcasting, no one really wants it. Shouldn't really talk about meta stuff. But personally speaking, I like talking about meta stuff, like making content. It's yeah. just fun to do. Yeah. Um, I I focus more on that than I practice, which is a bad habit. Yeah. Um, but I I, I <laughs> today I was um talking to someone, mm-hmm. and I was talking about uh, me practicing and me how I struggle to find, dude. It is so hard to find a lesson teacher that can actually teach me something that I need to learn. Mm. Um, because I'm at this really weird position to where I am good enough at music to where I'm not a beginner. In yeah. fact, I am good at, I'm actually good at music. I was a very good player in high school. Right. Um, and I personally think I'm just a good player in general. I'm not like an egomaniac, but I think I'm a good player. Right. But I'm, I'm not like, like I'm not like a prodigy, but I, I'm a good player. I, I work pretty work. I work pretty damn hard to get where I'm at. But yeah, um, you put in the effort and it's showing. Mm-hmm. Well, but that's the thing. I'm on. I only play on brass instruments. I don't really play on 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 string. Right. And I'm trying to learn bass guitar, so I'm having a little bit of trouble because it's like it's, it's it's a whole new world. Like it literally is a whole new world, and and it's 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 hard to get used to everything. I don't know how to do everything. Like I don't know how to play scales on my. Well, I kind of know how to play scales on bass. Controlling the string of. vibrations and stuff. You know, muting uh, when you yeah. want it to. Don't know how to do that. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, oh, let me, get a, let me get a lesson teacher to help me guide through it. And if I had a good lesson teacher, I probably would be at a pretty like pretty decent level now. Because yeah. I can play basic songs mm-hmm. at lower BPM. I think like one of my biggest goals was I was able to play um, the bass line of Fly Me to the Moon at like half tempo. Yeah. Fly which is me fucking to awesome. The moon. Good song, yeah. but also really good walking bass line. I liked it a lot. Sure, um, I should I should get better at the song, but um, I don't know. I I'm like so I'm like I'm not a beginner is what I'm trying to say. Mm. But at the same time, I want to learn jazz. Um, so the only options I have is either learn from rockers at Guitar Center, right, or people who only know how to teach beginners, which are also the rockers at Guitar Center. Mm. Um. So like like everyone can only teach you the beginners, or they can teach you like rock stuff specifically. And I'm like, well, I don't want to learn the rock stuff. Well, and then they want me, and then like like no offense to rockers, but like all they want to do is read tabs. And like I can read music. Let me right. read music. And my my lesson teacher was like, no, we're reading tabs. I'm like, no, I want to read music. And I'm just like, well, I'm paying for this, so fuck this. I'm out of here. Well, look for um, what what if you looked up uh, local like orchestras or like local uh, jazz quartets in your area? Because there's got to be. There's got to be like jazz musicians in where you live. That I don't know. I don't know. I that's what I need to do, and I need. To, I I actually, funny enough, never thought about that. Find find a jazz quartet. Find a jazz group or a bit jazz big band. Mm-hmm. Those the I just, members of the bands uh, <laughs> are usually credited, and then look up those members, mm-hmm. see if they provide any music teaching services. I need music teaching services. I want to get good at my instrument. Um, I want to get as good if not better at bass than i am at brass because i'm pretty fucking good at brass instruments i'm not the go but like yeah. i can fucking compete um and i, really, I don't want, i don't get good at bass i also needed to go to college <laughs> yeah. bit of a pressure i do oh. need it for college Imagine. um but yeah it's like i've been struggling to find a good lesson teacher that i just fuck with because i've gone through um you wanna fuck your lesson well, really teacher, what? I've only, I've only, huh? Huh? I've only ever gone, I've only ever had one lesson teacher, but that's because the other ones were so terrible, I didn't even try. Uh. Um, So yeah, it's like, I don't know, I'm just kind of like in limbo, and I I really want to get good at this instrument, because it usually takes me around like two years to get really comfortable with an instrument, Yeah. and I'm already entering, this is the start of the second year, it's been one year already. Very cool. Uh, And I, and for the most part, I don't give myself enough credit. I went from barely being able to play the notes, to being able to play like all the way up to like, the six like frets on all four strings. Yeah. Um, which that's a lot of fucking notes, by the way. Yes. Um, but um, yeah, it's like I got I I'm finally like, not terrible. I'm yeah. like mid now. I'm I'm at the mid stages, and I want to get to the good stages. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I just I need to practice more, but I don't have the you motivation to practice. Just. I want a teacher because I also 
teachers give me material because here's the thing the reason why i don't practice much is because they give you I'm a, just kind of like have a schedule you don't have a schedule you don't have like a, a thing to i don't practice yeah towards. i don't have i don't have yeah i don't have a schedule i don't have anything to practice towards like right now i have fly me to the moon curriculum um, curriculum you don't have a curriculum that's what i'm thinking yeah. of, curriculum i have i have fly me to the moon and i just discovered that after a year of playing yeah um just a song that i actually like and i could actually like play um and i'm just like well um, I, it took me this long to find one thing. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and and I need I need that guidance. Um, Absolutely. Now I don't need to learn music because I already know how to play music. Um, maybe more advanced music. I also kind of suck at counting, but that's something I need to work on myself. Um, mm. But yeah, it's just like I don't know. I just I, I need I need a teacher, <laughs> and I've been struggling. I was struggling. Absolutely. Although, I've kind of gotten used to like learning stuff without guidance in a way because um teaching yourself self-taught yeah because i i mean I, i'm honestly doing that with japanese um kind yeah. of but like i had like an idea of what to do because i just copied what this other guy did right. like his journey i'm like i'm gonna do exactly what you did um uh, so i had that uh and then rhythm games got into a genre i had no idea anything about and i just kind of brute my force my way until i got good at the games and now i don't even know what that was I think it was like a hiccup and a burp oh, that I tried I to do. I didn't even hear it. It felt weird. But um, yeah. I, I brute forced my way into getting uh, good, good at rhythm games. I'm not like the goat, but I'm good at them. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, I've, I've been, I've been kind of getting used to it. Yeah. No, I think that's, I think that's cool. I think, uh, I think it's all about the hours that you put into it, right? You know? It's all about it's the about, hours about, of practice that you put into it that then make. It's about drive. It's about power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking. Oh shit! You know what? It's all coming together now. The Rock's return to wrestling. Oh, I saw. I saw that. Yeah. I was like, who? Yeah. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Can you smell what the Rock is cooking? You know, he's back. Let him cook, I bro. I I love. Oh, I shit. love. I love. Yeah, cooking. Speaking of cooking. I love the Rock. Dinner update. For real this time, I had some spicy chow mein and two bowls of pho. Thanks I've for coming to my dinner update. Either. You've I've never, never had, had either. You've never had pho? Vietnamese no, soup? I've heard of it. What? No, I, I've heard of it, but I, I just, I've just never had There's it. There's got to be a Here's pho place somewhere, in, somewhere where you're at, right? There's got to be. I've had, I've had One of like the ramen. greatest like Vietnamese restaurants is in like your state. In the U.S., yeah. one of the best, like, one of the a well-regarded Vietnamese restaurant is in your state. Here's 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 my explanation. I'm a loser. Oh. I do not go outside. Oh, man. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I just, I don't, I don't go out much. Uh, I'm too busy. Um, I was in marching band for all high school. And I am now, like, at school and working all the damn time. Yeah. Um. So, and also, my whole family only has one car, and there's three people who need to travel. Mm. Um, that's fair. That's I'm fair. saving up for a car. I don't even know how to drive because I haven't had enough car to time to drive. Um, we gotta, yeah. we gotta go to very if if and when I ever have an excuse to go back to Texas. Oof, wait. I am going to California. Oh wait, shit! Did we talk about July? I mean, it's not, it's, what do you call it? It's not too big of a deal, right? Because uh, we talked about Tejas before, haven't we? I don't remember. I don't remember either. I'm pretty sure we Texas? Did, uh, the... I think we cut it out, actually. Did we cut it out? No, we, uh, I mean, this is a long bit that we might have to cut out, but I swear we talked about it in the arcade episode. The arcade episode? Oh, uh, yeah, I ducks the mall I go to to play rhythm games, but. I mean, right? I'm fairly certain that you – shit, we might have to cut all this. Damn, I'm sorry. No, I'm fine. Okay. Anyhow, cut what? There's nothing to cut. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. I've already – I've already, I've already doxed. To, you've already doxed. I've already – I'm pretty sure I've all, I'm pretty sure I've already doxed where I go to the mall. Look, guys, um, and if right, I haven't, here's a contract then, that man. we're going to make with you listeners, all right? Just don't mess with us, and we will keep making videos. How about that? Huh? <laughs> deal? Deal? Huh? 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 Anyways, if I ever get an excuse to go back to Texas, we got to go take some eat. We got to go to some restaurants. I'll look up some good restaurants to visit, mm -hmm. and we'll drive there. Now, I know I that sounds crazy, a... 
but as long as it's not a Mexican restaurant, because I'm very picky with Mexican food, because yeah. my mom just makes good food. But I will say, holy, okay, yeah. that's a whole another side tangent. But um, um, but uh, there's this one restaurant I do like. It's a Mexican restaurant. Mm-hmm. But uh, usually, like my mom's good at cooking food, and yeah. I can also cook. So, yeah. But no, um, I'm, I'm, I'm it's like it's like an, 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 another another thing is that when I go to restaurants, I'm mostly with someone. I don't go by myself. Uh, and my mom isn't a huge fan of Asian food. Uh-huh. And my mom, no, my sister is vegetarian. Well, that should work so, out. There's plenty of vegetarian options at most Asian food restaurants. No, Especially but I'm saying Chinese. it's like, but I'm saying it's like really hard. Well, she's right. also super busy. And, right, right, but it's like, I it's so weird going to a restaurant because I have to justify it for two people or three people. Right, um, that makes. And it's sense. really. Yeah. It's really, really hard to be like, hey, let's go. Well, we've been to Asian restaurants, although right. the ones that we've been to have kind of been a bust. I'm not going to mm-hmm. lie. Um, although we went to this Korean. There, me and my sister, uh, have. A, there's a mall near us that has a whole like Korean like food market. And there's a whole like strip that's just restaurants inside this mall. Um, and I've uh, had the best Korean um, cor- hot dogs, corn dogs, Ooh. Korean street corn dogs. Oh, man. And I've tried Korean street corn dogs at other malls and other just places in general. They, it doesn't fuck as hard as this one. It's so fucking good. I love Korean cor- street food is crazy. <laughs> it's so it's so good. Korean street food I did is have insane. I did have Korean like chicken wings, um, and I wanted the spicy ones, and it was sweet and spicy, and I was so disappointed. Um, but also that restaurant didn't seem that legit because they were playing K-pop music. But at the same time, most normal Korean restaurants do play K-pop yeah. in Texas. But I don't know. Um, Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, if I go to Texas, we've got to hang out. Well, I think that's wraps. You want to call it wraps? Yeah, that's pretty we can good. call it wraps. Good I think play. it's pretty good. Uh, there will be, a, there will be a, a real talk vlog at some time. We will blur our faces. No, we'll wear luchador masks to hide our identities. It'll be a vlog uh, with us both wearing our Lucha Libre personas. It's all I coming together, vlog. man. It's all coming together. I might vlog when I go to um, Anime Expo next uh, this year. You have to wear a Lucha Libre mask, please. please. <laughs> I don't have one. I don't have Buy one. Buy one. Make <laughs> one. <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> I'm not Mexican enough. I don't know if they'll accept me. What do you mean me. not Mexican enough? Rey Mysterio's Chicano, and he got to wear a mask with <laughs> WWE. <laughs> That's funny. Anyways, um, this has been real talk. Uh, today we talked about. Um, I'm do. You want to do the bet? You usually do. Or you want me to do it? I I don't know. Do you want to like flip a coin for it? I don't mind. It seems like you want to um, do it. I'm more than fine to let you do it this time. Roll a d20 and add your strength. <laughs> 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 and also add your um oh. your uh what what the fuck are they called Charisma? what are they called what I, no uh, the the modifier. the. No, the the de- the debuff. What's the debuff called? Add a break. Add a break to it. Are yeah. you are, are you talking about derp? Or are you talking? <laughs> derp. Roll a D20. I, that's the yeah, only thing. Uh, roll a d twenty. Add your strength, but also roll a break. <laughs> Kill yours. I mean what? <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. Um, Speaking of which, yeah, working on um, the next tabletop session potentially. Potentially. I want to work on hallway videos, but also um, we've talked about arcades, 40k. Uh, honestly, just a bunch of random shit today. We, uh, we've been kind of some topics, man. Well, we talked. We talked. We talked about. Yeah, we talked about a lot. Yeah. Uh, see on uh, um, three, two, two one. one. Keep, uh, it, keep real. it real. Wow. Usually, Andreas has a little bit extra bit after this, and I have to edit it out. But uh, I'm doing my, it this time. What is my extra? Oh, oh, oh this thing that we're doing Do-do. now. <laughs> Okay, do do. Bye. I was confused.